Nicknames like Punky and Dicky. And they drive cars with colorful monikers like the Flying Bathtub. These daring souls were the darlings of motorsports youth. A time when anything could happen. And the only thing that was really important was going faster. Well, times change and these cars change and so do people. But when these racers step into these vintage sprint cars, it seems as though time has stood still. It was a time that seemed so long ago, before racing got high tech and high priced, when just a few thousand dollars could put you on the fast track. It was the golden age of motor racing. It was when uh, racing was still affordable and, and uh, the average uh, fella could, could make a living out of it. A.J. Foyt, Ornelli Jones, and Roger Ward were just a few of the drivers starting careers in the cockpit of a midget or sprint car. Those powerful little machines that were the first race cars to run on nitromethane. And from the 30s to the 50s, they kept race fans glued to their seats. And though they lost the race against technology, they won the hearts of all who raced them. It's a thrill they've never kicked. This is just really kind of like a holiday uh, for people like me and a chance to relive the past, which we promised we would never do in days gone by. Dickie Ferguson agrees. I quit in 1950 and uh, had never had any intention of ever getting back into one of these. I came out here and they put me in one of the cars and that was it. Anybody doesn't get a charge in one of these things, it's got to be dead. The Western Racing Association is dedicated to keeping the memory of these classic cars alive. Its members tour the West Coast in summer and call the dirt track at Willow Springs their home in winter. Officially, this isn't racing. It's an exhibition. But don't tell that to the drivers. There's a certain thrill about being in an open cockpit car and just the wind going by you, the ability to throw it sideways a little bit. And we're going as fast through the corners as, as we are down the straightaway. Poke that little thing and it goes pretty good. Kind of hard to keep up with some of the old guys, I'll tell you. They get going pretty good. It's just fun to, to be out there blowing off steam. We try and not get too wild, but uh, sometimes we're going a little too fast. <laughs> you got to have a lot of lead and close your eyes and hope to get through there sometimes think I go too hard for a guy 75 years old. <laughs> for one-time midget racer Buzz Lowe, this is a chance to relive the glory from decades past. For Stan Goldstein, it's a chance to make childhood dreams come true. That was a very romantic era. It was very impressionable to me. And, and when I was 11 years old, I decided I was going to own a midget. These are not replicas you see here. These are the real cars that raced 40, 50, even 60 years ago. There aren't very many of them left, and each year they get harder to find. The first thing you have to do is to go get your big checkbook out because the price has really gone up on these things. And sometimes somebody finds one in a garage or a barn somewhere in the countryside and they'll restore it. There is a story behind each of them. Bobby Ware found this one nearly 50 years after his father sold it known as the flying bathtub. I was sitting on the beach down in Baja, California, and I was reading a paper down there, reading the want ads, and, and I saw an ad describing a car known as the flying bathtub. Well, there was only one flying bathtub in the whole world. I had to have it, and so I went down and got it and put it back together. And now that car brings Bobby special memories of his dad. I think of him in it and how, much, how good a time he had with it, and I just have that feeling that he's sitting there with me part of the time. 
Buzz Lowe raced number 93 back in the 40s. The car was out of my hands for about 40 years. And when I found the car, it was in Davenport, Iowa, sitting in a fellow's basement. I sold this car with some spare parts in 1948 for $4,000. I paid $25,000 to get the car back. This has the original engine, original radiator, original rear end, in and out box. Everything is original on this automobile. Most of these cars were designed and built by Frank Curtis. He made hundreds of them, but his own son had to search to find one of his dad's creations. This particular car was built by my dad back in 1948, and it went back to a fellow in the uh, Indianapolis area. It had been stored in his basement for 35 years. We got out there, and here it sets this thing all shined up. My dad couldn't believe that this thing was still in that beautiful a condition. This Curtis Craft is powered by an Offenhauser engine. It was the motor of choice for the serious midget racer. 110 cubic inches. Makes about 300 horsepower. But another class of midgets was propelled by Ford Flathead V8s. 130 cubic inches turning out 60 potent horsepower. A car with an engine like this would be capable of going at least 100 miles an hour in a straight line. No question about it. The Sprints ran with much bigger mills, mostly offies of 250 cubic inches or more. While all these cars are indeed rare, there are some one-of-a-kind gems among them. There's the Gilmore Special, a Sprint car which took its name from the famous track and is powered by a unique engine. Ed Winfield, the builder of the Novi Governor's uh, automobile racing engines of Indianapolis fame and also the Winfield carburetors built these engines. And there's the Sprint Roadster, a reminder of an era when war shortages brought a new look to the track. After the war, it was hard to find old race car stuff, so we could get these Roadster bodies out of the wrecking yards and build them ourselves. This one here has a 270 GMC truck engine with three carburetors. If you think these men are stuck in the past, well, they'd be the first to agree with you. But by reliving those days, they can show the new generation of race fans how it used to be when brave men in open cockpits slid through the turns and thrilled the crowds in stadiums across America. And thrilled themselves as well. And every weekend we get to go run, it's just like winding the clock back 25 years. And... If you ever drove a race car, you're a racer. Well, that's the way it goes. <laughs>